Well, I met a young lady a couple years ago. I was introduced to her because uh, she was about to go on a reality TV show. And she knew this was going to change her life. And it did change her life. And she loved the ministry, so she reached out. And I was introduced to her because she just wanted some encouragement. She knew she was going to a place that she could get a lot of criticism. People wouldn't understand. But she believed. She believed it was what she was supposed to do in her life at the time she was supposed to do it. So she reached out for some guidance and a little encouragement, and that's when I met her. And so I want to introduce you. I've invited her here tonight just to tell a little bit about her story and how she felt when she faced fear. And how many of y'all face fear? Do we ever grow out of fear? No, fear is always trying to stop us. Fear is always trying to limit us. But you know what? You got to learn that God is stronger than that fear. And what's inside of you is bigger and more important than what that fear is trying to stop. Because it's so big that the enemy wants to stop you in your tracks. And the only way he knows how to do it is to put fear in our life. So I just wanted her to come and just share a little bit about her story. I know that you'll love her. She has been a delight since I've known her. She is a TV personality. She is an influencer. And now she's an author. Will you join me in welcoming? <laughs> Madison Purdue Pruitt. Sorry, Maddie. <laughs> Maddie Pruitt works too. Maddie Pruitt. What's How up, Lakewood family? How are you doing? You guys look amazing. You guys look so good. Man, what an honor it is to be here. Thank you so much for having me. It has been just nothing but a joy just getting to know you and your family. And I actually just walked over to my mom a few seconds ago, and you know what's so crazy is about two years ago, before I ever said yes to going on the reality TV show that I went on, I was in a season of brokenness and loneliness, and I was struggling and wrestling with a lot of different things. And I remember watching you guys um, you and Joel and just watching you from afar and just believing and praying like you were just talking about. And it's crazy that I'm here now with you guys and it's just all come full circle, but that's not a testimony to who I am, but just a testament to who God is and how good God is, that he can use anyone, anything. So just keep believing, keep pressing in, keep trusting, just like you said. But it's just an honor to be here with you guys. And, you know, we're going to talk about my book, but I just want you to know I'm not perfect. I don't have it all figured out, but I am locking arms with you guys, and we are in this together. And I just want you to know that I believe in you, I love you, and I do believe that you were made for this moment. That's right. Amen. Uh, Will you introduce your mom and your sister? Yeah. <laughs> so my mom is right here, Tanya, and then my sister Mallory is sitting right here. My other sister wasn't able to make it tonight, nor my dad, but yeah, it's so cool just having them here. It means so much to me. Um, they've walked me through a lot of crazy seasons of my life, so it just means a lot for them to be here. Thank you for being here. They flew in from, from Alabama, Alabama, so we thank you for coming tonight. So Maddie, I said that you are now an author. You have a new book out called Made for This Moment. It's actually not coming out till when? Next It comes out Tuesday, Tuesday. so October 19th. So yeah, that's you guys really are good. like some of the first to see it. <laughs> yeah. So tell us, why did you write this book? So when I came off of the reality TV show that I was on, I had so many people asking me, Maddie, how were you able to stand firm under pressure? How were you able to stay true to yourself, stay true to your convictions, your beliefs, your values? How were you able to remain confident? And I was able to say, well, you know, of course, God and the Holy Spirit, but it's because that I believe that the way we respond to pressure matters, but the way we prepare matters just as much. And I wanted to be able to put a message out there that not only spoke to, yes, like God has called you for great things. God has a calling and an anointing on your life, but there's a responsibility that we have. There are choices and everyday decisions that we have the choice to make that matter. Our everyday moments matter. And it's the small moments that prepare us for the big moments. And I wanted to put a message out there that just inspired and encouraged people that you were made on purpose and for a purpose, that no matter what you've been through, 
through, no matter what's been spoken over you, no matter what you're facing right here and right now, that God has a plan and a purpose for your life and that you were made for this moment. And that's really what kind of encouraged me to do that. And I just wanted to, you know, put a message out there to encourage people. So good, so good. So for those of you who may not know you or may not know what, what kind of you've been through and what brought you to this pivotal moment, tell us a little bit about yourself. But, you know, talk about like, a little bit about yourself, like where you were raised, tell about your mom and dad, and just kind of what brought you to this place that changed yeah. everything for you. So I was raised in a Christian home. I have two amazing parents, and they showed me from a young age the importance of following Jesus and, and what it actually looked like to have a real relationship with Christ. They also, you know, I spent all of my time at church, at church camps. I was at every single thing that you could possibly be at, doing the dramas, doing the sign languages. I mean, I was in everything. And then my dad also coached basketball. So if I wasn't at the church, because my mom helped with a lot of things at the church, I was at basketball camps. And I would be, I mean, like, five, six, seven years old, leading all the basketball camps with like the varsity boys. And I thought I was like the coolest thing ever. And so that's how I grew up. That was what my life looked like. And, you know, I have two younger sisters and I've been super close with my family, um, you know, my whole life. And then, you know, it was really in college when I had my first moment. I've, I've known Jesus my whole life, but it was for the first time in college when I was fully on my own, you know, no one was telling me what I should or shouldn't do, you know, how I should or shouldn't live. It was just me and God. I could make any decision I wanted to make. I could be anybody I wanted to be. And so I knew I was going to be faced with some temptations and some pressures. I knew I was going to be faced with situations where I would have the pressure to change myself, become something that I'm not, you know, give in to what everyone else was doing, what everyone else was telling me to do. And so I wanted to ask myself, you know, I just remember I was freshman year in my dorm room and I just asked myself, Maddie, who do you want to be? Good question. What kind of life do you want to live? How do you want to be remembered? What is your purpose? Why are you here? And I presented myself with some scenarios and some situations because I knew I would have moments where, I, you know, I'd be in a relationship. I'd be alone in a room with a guy. He'd be real cute. He'd be telling me sweet things. How am I going to respond? What am I going to do? Am I going to just let my emotions and my feelings take over? Or am I going to know what I'm going to do before that moment ever comes? And I, you know, I knew I'd be in situations where I'd be, you know, around friends and, you know, in situations where all my friends may be doing something that I'm not comfortable with. And I'm going to have to decide, well, am I going to do what they're doing? Because it's a little awkward to be the only one not to do that, right? Like, I don't want to be weird. I don't want to like go against the grain. I don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable. I don't want to be judged. But I knew I was going to be faced with certain situations. And I, I knew that I had a choice to make because I knew I didn't trust my feelings. I didn't just trust my emotions because I knew if I'm in the heat of the moment and I just go with whatever everybody else is doing and I just go with whatever I'm feeling, it, might, it may lead down a road of resentment and regret and shame. And I still wasn't perfect. I still made some decisions that you know, I wasn't necessarily proud of, but I decided in that moment, okay, I'm going all in with Jesus and I'm gonna choose right now what I value most because I'm gonna be in situations where my feelings and my emotions are gonna be telling me, this is what you want right now. This is what you want right now. This is what everybody else is doing. This is what you want. But I wanted to be able to take a step back and say, no, but what do I want most? What do I care about most? What do I value most? And I want that to be the place, from the place where I make all of my decisions. And so in that moment, you know, I, I made some choices for my life. I predecided, you know, who I wanted to be and what kind of decisions I wanted to make. I went through Auburn University, graduated with a degree in communications, and then also went to Bible college and got a certificate in ministry and pastoral leadership. Had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I mean, I, I really had no idea. I graduated and I'm kind of just chilling like, okay, like what are we gonna do here? And you know, took some trips, lived at home. I was like, okay, I really gotta start figuring this out. And my first job was in foster care and adoption. And I knew that that was where God wanted me for that season, but I knew it wasn't you know, a forever, a forever job for me. And I just kept praying through it. Got a call to go on the reality TV show was not what I imagined for myself. I mean, like I said, I just graduated from seminary school. So when they gave me a call, I was like, listen, I think you got the wrong Madison. Like, I just graduated from seminary. I don't think I'm the girl you're looking for. And I, I remember I called my mom immediately, expecting her to be like, yeah, you're not going on that show. And So your friends, your yeah, friends. My friends submitted my, I had no idea that they were gonna call me. So my friends submitted my application or whatever you call it. And when they gave me a call, it was totally unexpected. I thought it was a prank call at first. I was like, who is this? And when they asked me to come on, I remember calling my mom right after, expecting her to be like, no, you're, you're not going on that show. 
And instead she was like, you know, never close a door before you take time to pray about it and really seek God's heart in this. And wise mom. Yeah, she's pretty wise. She's always right. It's kind of annoying sometimes. She's always right. <laughs> yeah. She's prayed out some relationships out of my life. I'm like, mom, come on. <laughs> but she, you know, and she was right. And I, t I took the time to pray about it. And just as I continued to pray, God continued to lay it on my heart. And it didn't make sense. It was so outside of the box. It was so out of the ordinary of, of the trajectory that I had seen my life playing out and the route that I had been pursuing but it was where I felt God pulling me and it was the peace that I had that led me to say yes. And it's so crazy and so beautiful, the blessing that comes when you say yes and when you obey. Mm. So, if, so tonight we're looking at you, Maddie, and you're so outgoing and you've got so much going on and we're like, oh, okay, Maddie, you know, I mean, nothing goes wrong for Maddie. Maddie <laughs> does, and never has any fear. You know, Maddie's just doing everything right. But have you ever felt fear? I mean, like you talk about what ifs and, and how you grew up feeling fearful. I mean, we all feel fear, but talk a little bit about that, your fear that you faced in your life. So I am, I'm an athlete, I'm competitive. And most of my life, I feel like I was always coming from this place of performance. I always wanted, I always felt the need to perform. I wanted people to like me. I wanted to win. I wanted to be the best. I always felt like I had, I had to prove myself. I had to, I had to explain myself. I had to perform. And I wanted people to like me. I wanted people to accept me. And so I was always coming from this place of lack, just attaching myself to all these different things, all these different labels. Okay, I'm, I'm a winner. I'm a basketball player. I'm, I'm this, I'm that just whatever anybody would give me. And what that led to was that from this place of always coming from this, this fear, this spirit of fear that was just, well, what if they don't like me? What if they don't accept me? What if I'm not chosen? What if I'm not enough? And there were situations when I would be rejected, when I would be cheated on, when I wasn't enough, when I didn't get picked. And it led to that constant state of, okay, I just need to perform more. I just need to do better. I just need to get my life together. And then maybe the next time, then they'll choose me. Then they'll want me. Then they'll love me. And I would say that moment in college was really what changed everything for me. When I came to a place where I was like, you know what? Who cares? Who cares what they have to say? Because I know who I am. I know who God says I am. And I'm not looking for validation and approval in other people. I live for an audience of one. I know I belong. I know who I belong to. And from that place, I was able to step out and courage in a lot of different, you know, seasons and situations of my life when pressure was on. And it was awkward. It was awkward to be the only one in the room to take a stand in my faith. It was awkward to speak out on behalf of someone that was getting bullied or, or, or taken advantage of. It was awkward in certain situations when I had to rise up in courage or bite my tongue and not speak out in certain situations in courage. And, you know, there were a lot of situations where I never knew like, okay, God, why, why am I here? Like, what, what am I doing here? And even certain situations on the show when I felt like, okay, this isn't what I even imagined what true courage looked like. You know, I think I had this picture of courage to be fist up, ready to fight, you know, ready, ready to just vo vocalize my opinions and just make my, vo my voice known. But I think during my time on the show, it really showed me what true courage looked like. Knowing when to speak up, when to be silent knowing when to go, when to stay. And it's not just courage alone, it's courage coupled with wisdom. It's courage rooted in obedience. It's courage being, being led by conviction. And that for me was when it really changed everything for me, knowing, okay, Lord, it's actually not even about me. So if I rise up and I speak up, it's not to validate myself. It's not to show off, hey, this is who I am, look at me. It's just to point to you. And there were certain situations where I was terrified. I was terrified to stand up for my beliefs. I was terrified to step out of the boat. What if, what if they think I'm crazy? What if, what if I get portrayed as a really weird Christian? <laughs> what if I get seen as something that I'm not? What if I'm misunderstood? What if I get judged? I had those constantly going through my mind and I just remember having this moment. You know what, one day, I'm gonna be face to face with Jesus. And I'm gonna to have to look him in the eye and I have to give an account for my life. 
And I don't want to have to look at him and say, you know what, God, you gave me these gifts, these passions, you called me here, but, but I was really afraid of what the people were going to say and what they were going to think. So I just, I just chose not to. I don't want to have to have that moment. I don't know about you, but I don't want to have to have that moment. I want to be able to look him in the eyes and I want to hear the words, good job. I'm so proud of you. You lived a life worthy of your calling. You walked in strength and grace and courage. Good job, my good and faithful servant. I'm so proud of you. And that's, I think, the difference between, you know, a selfish courage and a God-honoring courage is a selfish courage, it's all about you. But a God-honoring courage says it has nothing to do with me. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Where you move, I will move. I will follow you wherever you lead me. That is so good. So you had a situation when you were going to be on the show and you talk, talk about you were very fearful. You didn't know what to expect. You didn't know how long you were going to be there. Tell us a little bit about that because I think that you are very blessed and I know there's many mothers out here and there's, you know, parents and they, they, want, they, they want to know, are they effective when they are, you know, teaching their children mm. and what should they do? You know, so just tell a little bit about, about that story that we talked about earlier. It's one of my favorite stories because <laughs> I'm a mama. <laughs> so when I was preparing to go on the show, like she said, I had no idea how long I was going to be there. I wasn't going to have any form of communication with my family. And I was going to be cut off from pretty much everything that had made me me other than my faith with God. I wasn't going to have my friends. I wasn't going to have my church. I wasn't going to have my family. I mean, I was just thrown out there all by myself and had no idea what to expect, had no idea what it was going to look like, didn't know what was going to come out of it. It was just true obedience and true faith. And right before I left for the show, my mom comes up to me and hands me this, this stack of letters. And I was just moved to tears. It's like this massive stack. I was like, good Lord, mom, okay. Like you spent a long time writing all these. And I was just moved to tears. I was like, I know she poured so much time into this. And she was so prayerful about this. And this was so intentional. And I was just so moved. And so I, I packed my stack of letters and she labeled each one day one, day two. And so cute. And, you know, during my time on the show, every single day, that was like my favorite part. I would, I would wake up, I'd read my letter and it was like, little voice of my mom. I couldn't call her. I couldn't text her. I didn't have access to that, but I had these letters. And I just would read one each day, and each day it would give me exactly what I needed every time. And God was so faithful with that. And there was this one in particular where she, you, she talked about, you know, the relationship between a mother eagle and the baby eaglet and just how beautiful that relationship was because there comes a time where the mother eagle has to push the eaglet out of the nest and pray, fingers crossed, my baby's gonna soar, right? Like, I can't imagine how terrified that mother eagle must feel in that moment. Like, I hope, that, I hope my baby doesn't just fall to the ground. Like, I hope that everything I've been doing, everything I've been feeding it, everything I've been investing in it, like, it's got what it needs to fly. And I just remember reading this story and I was so moved as my mom just says, you have what you need. You've got this. And, I, and I've got your back, but I know that the nest was necessary, but it's not what you need in order to soar. And I just remember reading that, that letter and just being so moved. And each day I'm reading the letters and going through them. And it takes me all the way up, 41 letters, 41 days until I see my mom again. And it's so crazy and so beautiful that, that God, it was like God gave her the exact number of letters to write me, one for each day until I was, was to see her again. And that was exactly what I needed to really have kind of that strength, grace, and courage that I talk about. And then from that moment I saw her, I had to go back out and film the show for two more weeks after that. And it was like, that was exactly what I needed. I got the hug, I got the prayer. And then she was like, all right, you're on your own. You've got this. Yeah, and mom. I, I think that that is so beautiful for you and for, for, for wherever you are in your life. Um, just knowing that, yes, the nest is necessary. That's, that's the space where you're being fed, where you're investing, where you're preparing, where you're getting ready for your big moment. But don't resist the push. Don't resist when you're getting pushed out of that nest because that's your moment to fly. That's your moment to soar. And it might feel a little uncomfortable. It really might. And it might feel a little unnatural to start flapping those wings because you've never done it before. But don't resist the push because, you know, that's where greatness is achieved. That's where life, life, lives are impacted. 
And so I know that that was helpful to me, you know, when I was on the show, and I thank my mom for that. And But I hope that that's encouraging to you, and maybe you're here, you have kids, or, you know, you have siblings, or you have, you know, someone that you really care deeply for. I think it's important to, you know, invest in them and to love on them and to, but also to push them and to push them out of their comfort zone and trust that everything you've prayed for, everything you've invested in them is exactly what they need to be all that God's called them to be. That's so good. That's kind of what God does to us sometimes. We find ourselves in uncomfortable situations, but God said, I put everything in you that you need. Absolutely. Now I'm going to give you a little nudge. Yes. I want you to go. Put one foot in front of the other. Wet, flap those wings like you say. <laughs> and that's what he does. But he's there all the time. Just like, you know, your mother was there all the time. And she gave you that identity of who you are in Christ. And yeah. you told me those letters, she would remind you of who you are. Yeah. And I think that's so beautiful. And that's what the Word of God does. Yeah. It reminds us of who you are. God has already written your letters. Yeah. He's written you love letters. He wants you to read them. He wants you to know who you are. He wants you to know what you're capable of doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at Maddie, and she's a young, young girl. But I, I, I have to applaud her for being this young and being able to say, I'm going to stand up for what I believe in, because that's not easy in the world that we live in. And I'm so, I'm so, you know, impressed. And I, and I think that's so wonderful. And I think that, you know, God is giving you through this a voice to other women and to other young girls that they can, they too can live a life Absolutely. worthy of the calling of Absolutely. Jesus Christ. They can have what, you know, the desires of their heart without yeah. compromising Absolutely. those desires. Yeah. And it is so important. Uh, in, in this particular show, you know, there was a lot of competition because there was a lot of other girls there. Tell me, how did you come to this place where you didn't let the competition distract you or make you feel inferior. I mean, er, you know, comparison is, is something that everyone must fight. Yeah. You know, you compare your car, you compare your job, you compare your husband, you compare your children. <laughs> well, my children aren't doing that good. Or yeah. you compare you know, your clothes, whatever. We, we can all do that if we're not careful. And comparison is such a thief. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the experiences that you had with comparison. So there's this one story that comes to mind. And for those of you who don't know me, I'm single. So if you know of anybody, let me know. I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding, kidding, it's fine. <laughs> but there was this one season of my life where singleness was, uh, it was a pretty, I, I, was, I was struggling, let's just say it that way. I was struggling, I was not content. I was frustrated, God, why am I here? And I'll tell you why was because every single one of my friends around me was getting married. It was right out of college, and I had actually just come out of a four-year relationship with someone that I thought I was going to marry. So I was going through a breakup, and at the same time, happened to be in like six weddings. It was a great time. Loved it. So fun. And all my friends were getting married, and so I was, you know, I was throwing the engagement parties, the bachelorette parties. I was helping say yes to the dress. I was picking out the rings. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. That was my life motto of that season of my life. And it was very easy in those moments to be like, God, why? Why me? Where is he? Like, how come they get it? Like, look at her. She has it. I'm praying for it. She got it. God. <laughs> and I would be so frustrated and so just like, what the heck, God? You just left me here. Like, it's like you don't even listen to me. And there was this one there's this one story and situation that I'm reminded of. And I remember it so clearly like it was yesterday. I call, I call my mom and I'm crying. And that rarely happens. I am not, I've, I'm not very good at being vulnerable. So she knew immediately that it was something serious. And I had this daunting realization. I was, I was on the way to a rehearsal dinner for one of my friend's weddings. And I called her and I was like, Mom, I'm, I'm going to be the only single person at this rehearsal dinner. Like every single person there is gonna be married. Like, this is so awkward, it's so embarrassing. Everyone's gonna be talking to their husband and I'm gonna be just like sitting there, just like on my phone, acting like I have someone to text. <laughs> you know, when you're just like swiping through your phone and you're just like going through old pictures from like 2010 and you're like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I mean, I, I was like picturing all of these moments and 
I was freaking out and I just, I was crying and I just thought she was, you know, I thought she was gonna be like, you're right, sweetie, you turn that car around, you go home and you don't go to that rehearsal dinner. That's not what she said. And she snapped me back into focus and she was like, Maddie, let me tell you something. You would be, you would rather sit at that table single than be sitting next to the wrong husband. And she was like, you don't want it until you're ready for it. You don't want any of it until you're ready for it. You have to trust that God has you exactly where you're supposed to be. That what God wants to do in you and what God wants to do through you in this season of singleness couldn't be done had you been married or had you gotten what you asked for God so desperately. And that was so profound to me. And I was like, you know, you're right. And I wiped my tears, I put on my heels and I walked into that rehearsal dinner and I was the life of the party, it was a great time. <laughs> but I remember I came home and I was like, man, that was, so, that was so profound. And even as I was writing about that story in my book and it was drawing up all these emotions because that was, it was a really, really hard season of my life. It was a very lonely season. I was going through a breakup, just so broken and just so hurt. And it was very easy to fall into that comparison, to look at what everyone else had around me, to look at where they were going, to look at what they had, to look at who they were. And because I was looking at all that, I couldn't see who I was. I was so busy comparing myself that I didn't see the opportunity of what God had laid in my lap and what God had given me. I was so busy looking at what they had, I didn't see what I had. I was so busy looking at who they were, I couldn't even see who I was. And that was such a profound moment for me and it really changed a lot for me in that moment. And I still have moments of giving into comparison, especially in the social media world that we live in. It's so easy when everyone's posting the filtered photos, the highlight moments when they, it's the perfect picture. They take a thousand photos and then they post the one that they look perfect in, the perfect angle, the hair is great. And I mean, I do it too, so I'm not, I'm not judging. <laughs> but I'm just saying, that's the reality of the world that we live in today. And, I, you know, it's so hard because it's, even on the show, what really broke my heart was I saw so many of the girls changing themselves to be accepted and to be chosen and to be loved and to feel wanted. And maybe that's you right now. Maybe you felt like, well, I don't really like myself, so I might as well just change myself. I'll just be what, who she is, because it seems to work for her, so I'll just do that. But that's not, God made you so intentionally, so perfectly, so beautifully, that even with everything in me, I could never be who you are. I can't. I wasn't meant to be. You weren't made to look like her. You won't ever look like her. You weren't meant to, and her win is not your loss. Learn to champion her. Learn to be, learn to celebrate her while also being grateful for who you are and what you have. And I had to learn that the hard way. When I was in a season, when I was at my lowest and everyone else was at their highest, man, I had to learn how to celebrate them when I felt so low, so lonely, so broken. But I said, you know what? This season does not define me. Their win is not my loss. I'm gonna choose to embrace exactly who I am, exactly where God has me, and know that he's preparing me for something big. And that's how I had to choose to see that season. And for me, when I fall into those moments of comparison, things that usually help me is one, just confronting the lie and just replacing it with God's truth. Okay, God, this is how I feel right now. This is what I'm looking at right now. But what do you say? Because that's the ultimate truth. And ultimately that's what matters. So let me just remind myself of this right now. Or two, I call family or mentor or friend, someone that I know they're on the same spiritual level as me and they can call me out, they can call me higher, they can pray over me, they can encourage me. And then three, this, this works almost every time, is add value to someone else. 
Because it's in moments where we, we have those pity me moments like, oh, I'm not enough. God, why don't they love me? Why don't they choose me, 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 me? But as soon as we make it about someone else, it takes our eyes off of our problems and it puts our eyes on our purpose. Every time. And right before Jesus ascended and went back to heaven, what did he say? He didn't say, go, enjoy life, you know, do whatever makes you happy. No. He said, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And you know what that tells me? It's not about me. That's what that tells me. It's not about me. It never was. It never will be. It's not about me. It's about other people, and it's about glorifying God. So good. What do you think one of your biggest aha moments, biggest takeaways has been that's helped you prepare maybe for this next season? I mean, you've learned a lot through this last season. Yeah. Do you have something that you really can say, man, I always fall back on that? Yeah. Discipline, whatever that may be, uh, the way you approach things. Yeah. You know, I talk a lot about in my book just the power of preparation and the power of the private life and how important that is. Because I believe how you prepare in the private will determine how you perform in the public. Who you are when no one is around is who you're going to be when everyone is around. What's inside of you when the pressure hits, when the spotlight's on, is what's going to come out of you. So it matters how you invest in yourself. It matters what your everyday moments look like. It matters who you are when no one is around. So when people asked me that question, Maddie, how were you able to stand firm? How were you able to do that? Like I said, I'm able to respond to the Holy Spirit, but also because I realize the strength that you see on a television screen with all eyes on me, with millions of people watching me, wasn't just a, adrenaline-fueled, crazy, just woohoo moment. It was directly connected to the private decisions that I was making when no one was around. When I was laying the foundation of my beliefs, when I was letting God mend me and mold me into who he had called me to be, when I was discovering who I was, what my purpose is, when I was feeding my spirit so that when moments of pressure came, I was ready. I was prepared. And I think so many of us, we put such an emphasis on the big moments, the moments that everyone sees, the moments that everyone applauds, the moments that everyone retweets, the moments that you go viral. That's what we put our whole emphasis on, our whole life on. But the truth is, if you're not investing in the everyday small moments, small moments, then you're not going to be prepared to stand firm. You're not going to have what it takes to stand firm when the moments of pressure hit. And so who you are, knowing who you are, investing in that, being firm in that, so that when you're in moments of temptation and pressure, you're not just going off of feeling, emotion, pressures, and just conforming to whatever's around you, but you're actually able to say, no, I don't care what my circumstances look like. I don't care what the voices are saying. This is who I am. And then second, I would say is pre-decide. Pre-decide. Make a decision before the heat of the moment comes. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I believe. This is who I am. Because, listen guys, you can't just trust your feelings. I mean, I hate to say it to you, but your feelings are valid, but they're not always right. And your feelings can lead you down a dark place that you could look back years, down, years later and say, how did I get here? Who am I? I don't even know who I am anymore. And maybe you were at that place one time, maybe you're at that place now, and the good news is you don't have to stay there. That you can make a decision right here and right now. No, you know what? I am made for this moment. This is who God says I am. It doesn't matter what happened back there. I can choose to move forward. I can choose to keep going. I can move past my past. 
I can choose to step into the fullness of what God has for me. Not because you choose me, but because he chooses me. That is so good. Maddie's book, Made for This Moment, she's going to be out in the lobby. She wants to say hello and sign a book. But Maddie, will you just take this opportunity right now just to pray for us? Yeah. Let's just pray. Let's just pray because I know there's a lot of people in the audience. And, you know, God is moving on your heart. It, it doesn't matter how young you are, Maddie. God can speak to us and speak through us all. And I just, I just want you to just embrace what Maddie's saying, no matter what age you are, because it's not just enough to hear things, but you have to receive things. It's not just enough to say, well, that sounds good for Maddie. Well, I, you know, that's great. She can do that. No, God is speaking to you yeah. and he wants you to say, I'm going to believe that. Yeah. I'm going to believe I'm made for this moment. I'm going to receive what you're saying to me, God. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes, like you said, you be willing to hear things that maybe are uncomfortable because there's change that's going to happen. Yeah. Change is going to occur, occur in your life. And that change is what's going to move you into the place that God has already prepared in yeah. advance for you to be in. Amen. Because I can tell you, God's got prepared moments for you. And he is waiting for you yeah. to be ready to move into those moments. Yeah. So right now, I want you to just pray. Because every one of us have God-given dreams and desires. Mm. We want those things that God has for us. So we just want to all open our heart right now. And Maddie, you just, just pray for us while we're here. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to say real quick before I pray, um, thank you guys so much for being here. It's not by accident that you're here. It's not by coincidence. Maybe you saw it on social media. Maybe you saw it um, through the church or heard about it through a friend. There's a reason that you're here tonight. And I'm praying that God wants to speak something big to you. I can feel his presence here. I can feel him moving. And I'm praying that you guys leave better, that you leave challenged, better than how you came in here and ready to walk out there and make a difference. And I want you to know that you're a part of something so much bigger than yourself. And there's freedom in that. And there's joy in that. And I would love to have the honor to pray over you. But I just want you to know that I believe in you and I love you. And like I said, and I'm going to reiterate it a million times, I am not perfect. I do not have it all together. But we are in this together and we're better together. And you're not alone. And you are made for this moment. And I know sometimes even when you hear people say those things, you're like, no, 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 that's fine. That might be for the person next to me. But you don't know what I'm dealing with right now. You don't know what all I've been through. You don't know what decisions I made last week. You don't know what I grew up around and what I grew up with. No, I'm telling you, not the person that you, you were made for this moment. And God loves you so much. And I'd love to pray over you if that's cool. So if you just open up your hands and just receive this with me. Thank you, God. Lord, I thank you so much for who you are. Lord, I thank you that your love is unconditional. That it's not based on our works, our merit, how good we perform, how good we show up but that it transcends, that it's relentless, that you pursue us, that you choose us, that you pick us. I thank you that you did know us before we were even formed in our mother's womb. It says in your word, you knew us and you intentionally created us. You knit us together. You prepared us for the thing that you have prepared for us. You have called us to do great things. And I pray right now for the person that has been laying their head down at night asking themselves, is this all there is to life? Is there really more for me? Does it even matter if I speak out? Does it even matter if I walk out my purpose? No one cares. God, where are you? all of the questions, all of the struggles that they have wrestled with and come in here, here with tonight. I pray right now, Lord, that you would meet them where they're at, but that you would take them to where only you can, that you would, that you would take them higher, 
that their relationship with you would grow deeper, that you would fill them with all that you are. I pray right now just the fruits of the Spirit over them. Lord, I pray they experience a love, a love that they can't fathom, a love that's inexplainable. And from that place of receiving that, that love, they have such great love to give and it overflows out of them. Lord, I pray, I pray for joy. Lord, I pray for so much joy that the joy of the Lord is their strength, that they walk in rooms and people can just sense their joy, that their joy is contagious, that it lights up a room even if they're walking through hardship, that they just have the biggest smile on their face because they have so much peace in their heart. I pray for that peace, that peace that transcends all understanding, that peace that isn't predicated on circumstances or on the validation of other people or on the outcome of what they can or can't do, but a peace within that can only come from you. Lord, I pray for patience, I pray for kindness, I pray for goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Lord, I pray that they would know that they were made on purpose and for a purpose, that you have big plans for their life, no matter what they've been through, no matter what they're facing, that you want to do amazing things in and through them, that this is just the beginning I don't care where they're at, I don't care how old they are, I don't care what their background looks like. This is just the beginning, the best is yet to come. We believe that you have abundantly more, Lord. The world preaches that when we follow you, we have to give up all these things. And it's, it's a boring life, right? Like we have to give up all these things and we're without. But that's not true. With you, we experience joy, we experience contentment, we experience purpose, we experience freedom, we experience power, we experience forgiveness. And you're the only one that is sufficient. You're the only one that fulfills. And when we're with you, we never leave empty. And Lord, I thank you for that. And I thank you for what you're doing right here in this moment. And I pray that what you speak tonight, Lord, that it would be more than just a moment, more than just goosebumps, more than just tears, more than just a simple prayer. But it would be a life changed, a life impacted. Lord, that you would continue to give them dreams, that they would continue to hope, that they would continue to dream big, but that they would wait well, that they would wait intentionally, that they would prepare, that they would let you refine them and get them ready for where you're taking them. That they would realize that they're a part of something so much bigger than them. And that they would have that Acts 20, 24 kind of faith. This life is not about me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. That's why we're here. Lord, may they know that they were made for such a time as this. They were made for this moment. Lord, wrap your arms around them, draw near to them, speak to them tonight. I thank you for what you're doing, and I thank you that this is just the beginning. We love you and we praise you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.